The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Friday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got a little bit of a mixed market right now. S&Ps off the highs that we had pre-market. You make it up to about 45.20. Since then, we give up about 27 S&P points from the overnight highs, made it about 415. We were up at a high of 45.15, so you're talking about 22 points that we've traded south over about the last hour and a half and we're chopping right at basically where we were at the close yesterday you're negative by three points but also talking about the lows that we had overnight quite the acceleration yesterday 1 p.m eastern time markets trading at 44.50 we make it up to 45.10 that's a 60 point pop folks that's a 1.3 percent acceleration from the lows intraday to where we ended the day yesterday nasdaq 100 Pretty similar action. You're down a little bit more than the S&Ps right now. You were in positive territory. You're negative by 53 points right now. Quite a little sell-off since 7.30. You dropped about 115 points in the NASDAQ 100 yesterday. Trade from 14,300 up to above 14,600. Dow up 24 points right now in the session. Dow only major index in the green right now. Russell barely negative by less than one point. Crypto, Bitcoin, 43,105. Quite the slide in Bitcoin this week. Monday, we had a 47,000 handle. You make it to 45.5. Crypto, 43,105. Ethereum, 3234 this morning. Crude, $96.80. You talk about some volatility, man. Wednesday, crude's at 104. By Thursday, you have a 93 handle. And this morning, we make it almost back up to $98 for the price of crude. Gold contract, basically flat at 1937. There's a little bit of volatility this morning on gold, up to 1942, down to 1932. And we jump to notes and bonds. And what are they doing, folks? They're trading to lower price and higher yield. We got the tenure down an additional 18 ticks. You are now at 2.72%, folks. <laughs> Remarkable move, 2.72. Uh, They're talking about it in the Tiger's Den over there. Can't help but talk about it, man. Uh, 120 on the dot, we'll call it. The 10-year right now, you made it as low as 119.31. You take a look at this chart, you put it all the way back to August of last year. So we're talking about eight months ago. You were trading at 135.14. We had lower price and higher yield coming at us. We saw a little bit of a spike on the invasion of Ukraine with Russia. That's the spike here that pushed yields to about 1.7%, okay? That's where we were March 7th. And then just like that, folks, a full percentage point and then some zooming in on the action, March 7th. Now, we're one month and one day from this date, folks. You had a 129 handle. Right now, we have a 119 handle, okay? Basically, nine full points in the tenure in the matter of a month. I mean, you talk about percentages, folks. People think that you can flock to like a bond fund or something like that. Well, if you bought at 129, guess what? What is that? That's a, basically a nine, nine dollar, nine point loss. Uh, uh, 13 points would be about 10 percent. It's talking about six, seven percent loss in a month. Whew. Yeah. Be careful of that one. Now, here's what I'll also say, though, is that rates have risen one full percentage point in about a month. If you just take this spike out of the equation, okay, and say, okay, well, maybe they were sitting at about 2%. Now they're sitting at 2.7. 1.7 probably wasn't an accurate reflection of what's going on with the Fed doing their hiking. It was a reflection of the fear in the market with war breaking out in Europe. But let's just say you go from 2 to 2.7%. We're now at 2.72%. We're almost three quarters percentage point above 2%. I highlight that because three quarters percentage point, it might seem large now, folks. And it is leading the Fed. It's doing the Fed's job for them almost, right? But that's only three quarters of a point. That means all that that's factoring in is the quarter basis point we already got and the 50 basis point hike coming at the next meeting. Point being, we could go a lot lower and yields could go a lot higher. I'm not sure it's going to happen. 
but you better believe it's possible because the amount of rate hikes, hikes that we have coming this year, okay, substantial, to put it lightly. Right now, though, the trend continuing, and uh, yeah, you will get pops in this market, okay? Eventually, you will get maybe back within this trend line. I mean, you give it enough time, eventually you would, right? Uh, but it's a pretty steep line, folks. Even if we get back within this trend channel line, all right, you're still talking about lower prices coming at you over time. Nonetheless, we jump around to what else we have going on. Let's jump over to the VIX this morning. As we got the VIX this week, a little bit of a spike to 24 and change on Wednesday. Right now, we're trading 21.73 on the volatility index. All right, let's jump around and see what else we have going on in this market. The headlines I got up here. Yeah, we'll kick it off with Mr. Elon Musk. Why not? We've been talking about him a lot this week. Uh, I had some friends, uh, friends of friends, but follow him on social media. And uh, they were taking a helicopter last night. They're always doing fun stuff. I'm following their, their um, Instagram stories. I'll give Facebook a plug out there, even though I'm not a fan. Uh, and where do they show up at? They show up at Tesla's Gigafactory. So, wow, it looked like a nightclub, folks. I was watching some of the images out there. Maybe I'll try and pull up uh, some of the video that I was watching because uh, some of the commentary out there, let me see if I can even pull up just the picture while we're talking about it because CNBC's got an article out here. Yeah, this is at least some picture of what it is, right? I mean, you got strobe lights out there. This looks like a nightclub. No, it was the Gigafactory. Uh, they launched it last night. And uh, Elon was up there on stage. Uh, so let me just pull up the exacts. I want to get the full article of what I have here. Because I think that's the only one. I think I had a couple articles out there. Um, now, this article is about the robot. But let's see. Yeah, it was the opening of the new Tesla. Yeah, Cyber Rodeo is what they called it. So he jumps up on stage in a cowboy hat. Uh, it was quite a party. I saw the, the clips of it, man. Um, one of the things they said is he could have the biggest nightclub in uh, Houston, I believe. Austin. Austin. Uh, if he just turned it into a nightclub. He's got bigger aspirations than that. But it looked like a nightclub last night. And he was on stage. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> they aim to make 500,000 Model Y vehicles per year once production has ramped up there. Now, what he was also talking about was the robot. Uh, production of Tesla's Optimus humanoid robot could start next year. Here's what I'll say about this. Don't trust Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, he is a grand promoter. He's done it very well. Um, but he is constantly over-promised and under-delivered. Under okay? His promises have been so substantial that he can under deliver and still change the world though okay uh but he is continually on a timeline basis really push the envelope of what they're capable of sometimes he gets it done but when he says production may start next year folks that's giving himself what 20 months to just start production on something let alone when it becomes a reality of things um we have a shot of being in production of version one of optimus hopefully next year they have a shot of it folks well they have a shot of doing anything and elon musk he really does have a shot of doing anything um to his credit uh must claim that optimus will eventually be able to do anything that humans don't want to do well i agree with that eventually it's a not a matter of if but when technology will be able to replicate human interactions. But what if it's 10,000 years from right now? I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. Eventually is quite a term. Uh, nonetheless, we'll jump over to Tesla. We'll jump around some of the other equities we got coming up. We got a holiday week next week. We got bank earnings. We got CPI next week. We got a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. Be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now. You're looking at an S&P negative by four points, NASDAQ 100 negative by 53, the Dow positive by 17 right now. And uh, I will find some of those clips, folks, of the Gigafactory Rodeo. I was trying to find maybe some clips on YouTube. I'll pull it up because uh, I know it seems like uh, pretty interesting in terms of uh, nightclub, but they did a great job. They're launching that factory, man. What's it, $1.1 billion factory, I think is what that thing costs. Uh, maybe, the, yeah, $1.1 billion factory. It better be a nice nightclub for $1.1 billion. Uh, nonetheless, pretty cool. They get it launched. We jump over to Tesla, TSLA. And you're down with the market about six points, man. This thing has had quite a run from the March 15th lows in the market from 765 up to 1150. If you're looking for an entry in Tesla, uh, maybe it backs down a bit. You're 382, about 977 on the chart of Tesla. All right, let's jump around to what else I have going on up here. Let's see. Uh, we're kind of in a little bit of a lull right now in terms of coming for bank earnings. We're really going to accelerate things next week. As we kick things off, we get CPI data on Tuesday. Okay, so let's go over what we get next week. April 12th, Tuesday, 8.30 in the morning, we get CPI data. That's going to be a big one, folks. Uh, put it on your calendar. Expectations, I believe, 8.4% for the headline number. Video game numbers, as our man Kevin Hinks talked about. Uh, we'll see what the market reacts to. My expectation is, at this point, Everybody knows inflation is bonkers, man. Um, and the energy component is well known as well. So I imagine my expectations are I'm really going to be looking for the core number because there will be the ability to explain away the energy component of the CPI data. But if everything else is still rocking, you're going to see the market react. Um, if anything, is outside of the expectation. The risk almost seems like, and it's not gonna happen this time, folks, that's not my expectation, but there's so much sentiment that inflation is out of control in the market right now. It is so well known that the Fed is gonna bring it. They're gonna bring it hard. We've heard uh, the Fed speak this week. We've seen the way the 10-year has reacted. The job economy is super strong. The deviation, I imagine, could be that we get inflation less of a factor than the market is maybe expecting. All right. It's just my bias. 
there's obviously the possibility inflation runs hot, man. But if you run hot, you're going to be talking about pushing 10, 11, 12 percent or something like that. That's a harder risk for me to see than maybe the number coming in a little bit softer. But nonetheless, I don't think it's happening this time. Keep your eye out for the CPI data as we come maybe two, three months into the future. We're going to start dealing with comps that not are, uh, aren't as easy to push out as inflation really started ramping up towards the end of 2021. It's only April right now, okay? Last year in 2021, folks, we kicked off the beginning of the year 2021. Many analysts had no expectations inflation were where they're gonna be because you didn't have those types of numbers. End of 2021, it was already, already ramping up in pretty dramatic fashion. When we start coming into the second half of this year and those comps that we're coming against on a yearly basis are less severe, especially as we go into 2023, but even later this year, it's gonna become much more important to see how those numbers shake out uh, when we're comping against already high numbers because man, if inflation is still running hot at the end of this year and the job market is still considered strong by the Fed, watch out for those rate hikes, folks. All right, speaking of rate hikes let me pull up what we got here because sri lanka boy they just jack things up in pretty dramatic fashion folks this article out this morning sri lanka they raised the rate by not 25 basis points not 50 basis points 700 basis points uh lending from 7.5 percent to 14.5 percent overnight <whistles> just like that uh Way above the median estimate of 8.5%. Yeah, I would say so. And now they are dealing with some crazy inflation, man. I was talking, I was reading a couple articles on Sri Lanka this morning because they were talking about this on Bloomberg. Uh, this one is out last night, okay? Double digit inflation seen lasting through early 2023. The pace of price growth is seen easing to 12% in the first quarter of 2023 and slowing to 9.7% level for the full year. Growth forecast cut by 50 basis points to 2.8% in 2022 and by 80 basis points to 3.5% the subsequent year. Unemployment likely increased to 5.6%. I mean, look how they just jack things up. The pink is in the pre previous survey. Uh, the black is in the current survey. That's economists raising inflation outlooks. Folks, this quarter, 19.7%. 19 19.7%. 19 uh, up from 11.8%. Next quarter, 20.1%. Next quarter, 13.8%. We'll see how their rate hike goes from 14.5, man. Uh, but. We're not the only ones dealing with inflation right now. Interesting to see how these central banks are handling it. Uh, thankfully, it seems like the Fed's not going to have to be as dire as the central bank is in Sri Lanka. Uh, but 700 basis points, man, they are really worried over there. And yeah, if the U.S. right now was looking for potentially seeing inflation next year being 9.7%, we would be doing more than 50 basis points right now, especially with the economy being as strong as it is. Okay, let's see what else we got pulled up here. Yeah, look at this article, right? Talking about, uh, I think I got it up right here as well. We got global inflation talking about food prices. I mean, amazing, right? If you're a writer, of course, you could just write endlessly, I think, about inflation. Food prices jump the most on record as war sparks supply chaos. The UN gauge of world food costs climbed to a fresh record in March. Global food prices are surging at the fastest pace ever. Getting into the numbers here. 13% last month. There you go, folks. Uh, food prices already surging before the conflict started to a record. UN index of world costs soaring another 13% last month. Global food prices jumped most ever in March to a new record. I mean, look at that jump, man. It's crazy on a monthly basis. And folks, we're very fortunate in America. Um, and that's where they get into here. The food price rally is felt most in poor countries where groceries make up a large share of consumer budgets. And the fallout from Russian invasion since has sent costs of basic food like bread soaring. We have some problems here, folks, but nothing compared to what's happened in some of these countries. Uh, global prices has jumped 75% since mid-2020, eclipsing levels seen in 2008 and 2011 that contributed to global food crisis. Um, supply outlook. Raised the outlook for global grain stockpiles, usually a good sign for supplies, but said most of that is due to stranded grain in the Black 
Sea region. Ukraine's exports will be particularly hard hit from the war, with wheat falling 5 million tons and corn down 12. Point million tons from a previous estimate. Yeah, it's a remarkable one out there. When you look at those numbers, though, and you just check out that graph, I mean, even in March, things are jacking up that hard. I mean, we know, right, to expand this chart, we know that they've been rising for, and look at where it is, right? It's 2021, late part of 2021, coming into 20. 22 but boy that is quite a spike in march and hopefully that's not an ominous sign of things to come all right folks stay tuned we got the market opening up in about three minutes we got the s p's right now we've traded lower since about 7 30 this morning folks we just gave up a quick what is that 25 s p points since 7 30 we gave up a quick 30 points from the highs we had pre-market you're only negative by six points right now but a little bit of a dicey area as if you don't hold here right you're below where we were pre-market and if you don't hold here, we're right at where we were pre-market yesterday. Maybe we're heading lower, folks. Stay tuned. It's Friday, coming into a shortened week next week. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got the S&Ps right now opening up basically where we were pre-market. You're negative by five points. You're basically right where you were pre-market lows. You're right where we were coming into 7 a.m. yesterday. Uh, we trade below this price level. We'll see where we bounce. 44.90 right now. And as I mentioned, uh, I find out this morning that we got a short week less next week, folks. Uh, Good Friday. Market closed for Good Friday. 
on next Friday, April 15th. So we got four days next week, and they're going to be an action-packed four days. I mentioned we get CPI on Tuesday. Uh, we also get a plethora of companies coming out with numbers. Earnings calendars packed. We get Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, United Health, Bed Bath & Beyond, CarMax, Citigroup, Delta, Morgan Stanley, Rite Aid. Right Aid might be going out of business. We talked about them yesterday. U.S. Bank Corp. and Wells Fargo, among some others, I'm sure. But banks kick it off next week, man. We got four days, uh, and we get the CPI data at 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday. The other thing we have going on there, uh, we get PPI on Wednesday, and then we get some numbers on Thursday, man. We get... Uh, initial and continuing jobless claims, as we always do. We get some retail sales data. We get inventories. We get import price index will come out as well. Uh, and then you got the University of Michigan releasing its consumer sentiment index for April and a five-year inflation expectation. Then we all get to go hang out with our family for Good Friday. Market closed on Friday, April 15th, ahead of Easter Sunday. Okay, uh, jumping back to Tesla real quick. I, I, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I had talked about that I wouldn't believe Mr. Elon Musk. And the end of this article made some great points that I just happened to catch as I was jumping through some of the articles I pulled up here. Musk is known for his showmanship in which he announces that Tesla is working on exciting projects scheduled for years into the future to energize backers, including employees, customers, and investors. Often, products launch, product launches do not happen on the timeline predicted. That's very general. I'll jump to something a little bit more specific. So this is all talking about that. He said that Tesla may start producing their Optimus humanoid next year. For instance, on Autonomous Day, an event in April of 2019, three years ago, Musk said that Tesla would have one million autonomous robo taxis on the road in 2020. Now, imagine... What a lie that was, knowing where we are today, three years later, and how it's nowhere near something that is possible. Okay, he knew that at that time. Keep that in mind when you hear these things, because it's exciting stuff. He's a very charismatic man that uh, when he speaks, people listen. It's important to know what he said in the past, because that's a straight out lie, folks. There's no way somebody as brilliant as Elon Musk really thought that they were going to have a million self-driving robo taxis on the road in 2020 at a time of April in 2019, when he is so far from that goal right now. Uh, yeah, they say more than that. Nonetheless, we've been harping on Elon this week, but he deserves a lot of it, man. I've been saying, uh, I was talking to people last night. Um, it's unfortunate that he's not getting more press for what he did with not filing that regulatory filing. Because people really were hurt, you know, that were selling. I mean, let's go over it again one more time, folks, because you should be telling people about it. People should be aware of it. Regulations need to be changed. This is what happened when the world found out that Elon Musk had a 9.2% stake in Tesla. He was well aware that he was going to get a pop in, uh, excuse me, for Twitter. He was well aware he was going to get a pop in those shares the moment that the public discovered that he had a substantial position in Twitter. He knows his fan clubs. He knows what happens. He knows what's happened anytime that he has talked about Dogecoin, et cetera. Okay. So he crossed the threshold of 5% on March 14th. He should have filed the regulatory filing 10 days later on March 24th. 11 days after that, 11 days late on April 4th, he files the regulatory filing that he's amassed a 9.2% stake in Tesla. So basically, anything that he purchased past March 24th, if I was somebody that sold Twitter shares on March 25th, 26th, 20, uh, March 25th, 28th, 9th, 30th, 31st, or April 1st, I would be suing Elon Musk. I don't know if they have a case, but I would because he had inside information. It was supposed to be disclosed on March 24th. He had inside information that he had amassed a 5% stake that was supposed to be released to the public. He traded off that information and continued buying, I think over 10 million shares over these days alone. And you get that pop and basically he makes $150 million on it. And who's he take that money from, folks? He took it from the money that people sold to him. Okay, it's not theoretical money. That theoretical profit that Elon made, and it's not theoretical, it's actual profit that he has right now marked to market, should have been somebody else's profit. He took it from the people that sold it from him, 
and he knew at the time that he was going to have to release that information. All right. There's a lot more to this story, as in who was doing the buying for Elon Musk? They should have known that. Now, I can imagine Elon could have said, hey, screw that, man. I'm not filing it. It's my problem. I'll deal with it. I don't care. I hate the SEC anyway. Uh, I always tell him to go screw on, on, on Twitter, among any other things. Uh, but it's a bummer. More people should be talking about because he basically stole $150 million from the people that he bought Tesla from on inside information. Meanwhile, he's going to get a slap on the wrist. If the richest person in the world doesn't need to follow financial regulations in the interest of average retail traders, then what is the point of them at all? All right. Okay. We'll get off our Elon kiss, kick. Let's check out Tesla one more time, though, as they come off the Gigafactory uh, launch. Uh, down 2% right now, 1,036, but you've had quite a pop recently. All right, let's jump down the line and see what else I had pulled up here. So we've talked about Sri Lanka. Let's close that one out. We've talked about the global inflation. We talked about the holiday that we have coming up on April 12th. Excuse me, April 14th. Uh, we do have CPI data coming out Tuesday, April 12th. What else do we have pull up here? Yeah, that one's up for that side. All right, let's jump around. Ah, this is the one I wanted to talk about. Perfect. So this is an opinion piece over at Bloomberg. Okay, now I've read a lot of this guy's pieces. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar just because he's an opinion writer at Bloomberg. No real personal opinion on him, whether he's right or not, but he makes some interesting points here. John Authors, okay, I guess he was. They, they, they talk about his bio over here. Uh, he's now with Bloomberg, spent 29 years with the Financial Times, where he was head of the Lex column and chief markets commentator. Uh, now, what he's talking about is here, what you're expecting from earnings won't happen with a war on and interest rates rising, you'd think the profit outlook for companies in 2022 would be worsening. That's not happening. Uh, it's that time again. I just mentioned the companies that we have coming into earnings season. Now, check it out, though. He talks about maybe there's going to be a hurt on earnings, folks. That's what the big worry is, right? We might have a recessionary tendencies. We might have consumer demand waiting. We might have supply chain issues driving up costs. We have wage issues driving up costs, let alone just inflationary tendencies causing problems and supply chain bottlenecks across the board. But guess what? It hasn't happened yet. Bloomberg's best earnings estimate for the S&P 500 for the whole of this year has risen since January 1st. That does not happen often. Over the last 10 years, estimates for the complete 12 months have fallen seven times by this stage. The two years before this one saw that rises could both be attributed to exceptional circumstances. All right, we'll get into it a little bit more, but check out this chart, okay, in terms of previous years of where we are. 2020 quite a fall off we'll talk about a little bit more when we get back folks stay tuned we'll be right back in three minutes Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets trading lower right now. You're looking at an S&P accelerating. We're down 20 points right now, and you're down 20 points, man. But you're down 20 points. You're really down almost 40 points from where we were trading at 7.30 in the morning as you had the markets in higher territory. Quite a sell-off on the open. And as I stated, man, you go below where we were. That was a critical area. You were at the lows we had pre-market. You were also at the highs we had at 7 a.m. yesterday. Those correlated to the highs you had from the fed minutes on wednesday we just blew through that area you're probably on your way to 4456 folks uh that's correlating to basically an area that we had chopped around the lows on wednesday also somewhat near the area that we had lows yesterday 4456 to 4450 um not much in the way right now of this market maybe reaching those lows nasdaq 100 accelerating we're already almost at those lows in the nasdaq 100 right nasdaq 100 i think we just got below the lows on wednesday we have a low of Wednesday of 14,394. We sure did. 14,317 is the low yesterday. NASDAQ 100 just traded off 200 points in the last two hours from 7.30 this morning. Bitcoin trading lower as well, 42,895. We got crude up 43 cents. You get the gold contract up $4 right now. We jumped to notes and bonds uh, sitting at about 2.71%, the yield on the 10-year. So jumping back to that story, talking about earnings. Again, an opinion piece at Bloomberg. Take it for what it's worth, all right? But some interesting tidbits here. Talking about earnings. Uh, and Jimmy, you make a great point. In the Tiger's Den, Q1 earnings, minimal impact. It will be the outlooks that sour. And these are just estimates, folks. Things are going to change, okay? The, it is so difficult for these analysts. They're missing things left and right. And it's got to be that it's just very, very difficult because there's so much up in the air. This is not like statistical modeling that you learn, I'm sure, when you're becoming an analyst because we're in a state of an economy like we've almost never seen before. Now, here's what they talk about in this article, okay? And I mentioned this is... Expected 2020 earnings rose in the first quarter. Outside exceptional year, years like 2021 and 2018, 2021 is in the blue here. We're coming out of COVID. That was a big revision, all right? 2018, that was a good year as well. Strong numbers. The purple is 2020 when things dove off a cliff from, cliff from February to March. And then the white chart is where we are right now. S&P 500, best EPS. This is the first quarter. OK, now what they go on to say is. Let me get this exact because I was going through here and that was 2018 was the Trump tax reform cutting capital uh, gains, but also corporate, excuse me, cutting corporate taxes that just boosted earnings because it was just giving those companies more money than they had previously. Uh, 
So this would seem like a worse year on average. We're speaking about 2022, right, for earnings. This would seem like it's going to be a worse year on average. Everything going on from inflation to supply chain shortages, the whole kit and caboodle. Perhaps more surprising, earnings estimates for the FTSE and Euro First 300 covering the companies based in a continent where war is broken out have risen even more. So when you look at Europe, okay, they're rising even more in Europe. White is here. Look at that rise, only competing with 2021. Okay, 2020 is your purple drop off. But look at the other years in here that we had some negative action going from 100 to revisions. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting, though, is, is you say it might be a relief that at least the estimates for the first quarter itself have come down. Wait a second. We just talked about the year that they're going up, but they've come down. They have, even if we include energy stocks. Okay. Here are your sectoral estimates from fact set research systems show that brokers estimates for profits dropped by 0.7% over this three months. All right, energy through the roof, but industrials down 11.4%, consumer discretionary down 10.8%, uh, con con communication services down 6.3%, if you can see that. I know it's a little small and a little blurry. Financials down 3.8%, consumer staples down 3.5%. This is Q1. Well, wait a second. If we're talking about decreases in Q1 and we have basically earnings rising so far, so far on a yearly basis, then that must mean that they think they're going to go up. Let me get this right. So this can only be reconciled if Wall Street has somehow grown much more optimistic for the last three quarters of 2022. Despite the horrors of the start of the year, and that's exactly what's happening. Fourth quarter estimates have gained almost 4% percent since the turn of the year so here's your q1 number let me try and size that up a bit a 0.7 percent number but guess what 1.6 percent is the estimate in q2 well, uh, 2.4 percent rise is the estimate in q3 and almost a 3.9 percent rise is the estimate in q4 not many people would realize that's what's happening right now what's going what on earth is going on uh it's a legitimate question how is that happening well you got one member out there saying uh a former sell side equity analyst has a plausible explanation. Full year numbers, the most complete. Let me back this out to get the full. Uh, full year numbers, the most complete figures a company publishes annually tend to be very important inputs for earnings models. That's putting it lightly, right? They can only be plugged into spreadsheets once they're available, sometimes in the first quarter, though. That explains the rise in full year estimates. Then there's some good old fashioned earnings management by the process by which brokers always produce estimates that the companies they follow can beat. Manage your expectations uh, and enjoy a pop in the share price on the back of it. Anyway, take it for what it's worth. Earnings are going to drive everything. We're going to kick things off next week. Interesting, though, to see how those are shaking out. <coughs> Not exactly what I would have thought was happening, uh, just intuitively with everything going on, but nonetheless. All right, let's jump to the Masters. Did you catch out any of the Masters yesterday? I was able to get a little bit of Tiger uh, in the workday. Watched him putt on 18 to save par and finish the day at minus 10. Pretty cool. Uh Excuse me. At minus one, there he is, tied for 10th place. It's amazing, folks, what he is doing when you think about where he was uh, about a year and a half ago, a little bit longer than that. Just his leg shattered. He was in the hospital for three weeks. He was in the hospital bed at home for three weeks. That's a month and a half in a hospital, man. You know you're dealing with some issues to come back and be so competitive. And then you got you got to add on top of it, folks, because people seem to forget the back trouble he's had. I've had some back issues in my past. Uh, I've never had fusion surgery, thank goodness, okay? But boy, from what I read about it, obviously your mobility is going to be impacted when you have two different portions of your spine fused together, okay? You used to be able to independently rotate them. Now they're fused together. I think it was never before had somebody on the PGA had a spinal fusion and come back to either win a tournament or win a major. I can't remember which one it was. Tiger already did it. Uh, and nonetheless, he's he's in the top 10 for the first day. Hopefully he has a good day today as well. Hopefully we just see some good golf, man. Masters can't beat it. Uh, it would be nice to see Tiger around uh, as well. Here's what else I'll say. I'm learning a lot about it. This gentleman here, Scotty Scheffler, if you're unfamiliar with him, folks, 
He's the number one golfer in the world at 25. Haven't even heard of him. I'm not a huge golf fan. I love golf, but I just don't have the time to watch it. I love watching the majors. Even then, you could call me a fair weather fan, right? I tune in for the majors, all that stuff. Uh, this gentleman, 25 years old, has won three times out of five this year. Just became the number one golfer last week. Uh, who even knows this guy? Uh, congrats to him, man. Quite quite an achievement, and he's, he's doing well at the Masters. But boy, it kind of speaks to the publicity of golf without Tiger at the top. You got a number one golfer, man, that not many have even heard of, but he's on the charge. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Markets continuing to sell off right now. You got the S&Ps down to 4470. As I said, maybe 4456. We're only about 15 points from that price level. Uh, coming down right to the lows we had yesterday. You back things up. When you look at the lows we had for Fed minutes, you're right back to that same area. We're right back to about 44.60. NASDAQ 100 down even 200 points right now. You're within about 17 points of the lows we had yesterday, 14,332. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks, kick things off. Amazon down 1.5% right now. You're trading almost $50 lower for Amazon shares to 31.04. Apple shares down 1.4%. Look at that drop off, man. Watch out. Microsoft shares down 1.3% right now. Google shares down 1.2% right now. We jump back to Tesla. 
Tesla shares down 2.5% right now as well. And I did find a little bit of video talking about the Tesla. Uh, this is Tesla Raj, not familiar. He's got 41,000 subscribers out there. I'm sure he talks about Tesla a lot. And uh, he's had a, he had a few visuals up there just to give you a peek because it was pretty interesting as I was seeing it. When I talk about nightclub-esque, right? Look at the lighting they got in here in this Gigafactory as they bring everybody in, uh, walk people through it. Pretty cool action in terms of that Gigafactory. Let me up that in terms of getting, nah, that's the most they're doing is 720. But you can kind of get a feel for it. And then you add the man Elon Musk up there himself uh, in the cowboy hat and the whole deal. Uh, the stage, pretty cool when you look at where they are. Uh, 1.1 billion, billion with a B. Yeah, check out that stage. There you go. So I could see that as a nightclub. Get that, get that, get that uh, performer up there. Uh, but the one and only performer last night, Elon Musk. And yeah, they're sending the den. Uh, listen, I'm talking about Elon. I'm talking about the things he's putting out there. I'm talking about the humanoids. No doubt about it, folks. He has delivered for his investors. That is all that matters. The reason why I pointed out is because he's so charismatic that people want to believe what he says. It's also important to not believe what he says, though, and start thinking you can trade off some of the things he says, because that's where things differ dramatically. Those humanoids ain't coming next year, folks, just like uh, a million autonomous taxis were not coming in 2020. Tiesto, get him up there, Peak. Let's go. I saw Tiesto uh, a couple times. Saw him with my dad at uh, an amazing show in Georgia. What was it? I'll have to think of the name of it. Good old Tiesto. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your Friday off with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil coming up next. Uh, live programming all day, folks. It's Friday coming into a shortened week next week, and earnings kick it off next week as well. Stay tuned for Basil, folks. Have a great Friday.